Hey listeners, welcome to the Kids Ministry Podcast. We are so glad that you are here with us today. I'm Stephanie Chase. And Stephanie Rogers. Yes, and we are from Champion Forest in Houston, Texas. The great state of Texas. That's right. And today we are going to talk about the three P's of classroom management. Because we know you as kids ministry leaders, whether you're teaching in weekday, on a Sunday morning, on a Wednesday night, wherever you're teaching, you've got to be able to manage your classroom. It makes things go so much easier. Your day goes better. The kids have more fun when the classroom's managed well. That's right. When the kids are happy, teachers are happy. And then moms and dads are happy. Yes. So... Let's learn the three P's. All okay. right. The first P that we're going to talk about today is planning. You've got to have a plan. You do. Things can go awry real quick <laughs> if you don't have a plan. You've probably heard that quote, um, the person who fails to plan plans Please to fail. fail. Yes. And so we want to encourage you to make a plan. And how do you create a plan for your classroom? Right. This and it can be confusing at first. If you if you're a new teacher, this can be really confusing. Yes. So what you want to do is think through all the parts of your day. And every classroom, doesn't matter where you are, should have some basic key elements. So what are the parts to your classroom schedule? Okay, let's start with when kids arrive. So when children arrive, you've got to have a plan. When they walk in the door, what are they going to do? You got to know. That's got to be part of your plan. Then some other parts would be learning centers. Oh, those are great. Yes. Or stations. Or stations. You might call them stations. But these are areas around your room where activities are set up and ready to go for children to play and learn that go with the Bible story you're teaching or the lesson that you're teaching for the day. Right. Yes. So arrival activities, stations and centers, learning centers. And the best one of all. What? Snack. Woo! Bring on the have snack time. <laughs> That's my favorite. Yes. <laughs> yes. So you've got a plan for snack time. You're probably thinking, how do I plan for snack time? Well, you've got to get, get the children to the snack. You got to serve the snack. You got to know what you're serving, and you got to get them back away and out of snack time. Oh, that's the key right there, yes. getting them out of snack. Yes, because some of those little cuties want to eat all day. But you mean it's not lunchtime? Exactly. <laughs> no, it's snack time. So you got snack time, and then you'll have a group time mm-hmm. where the children come together at group time, and they will. you'll have your plan for group time. Yep. And bathroom time. Oh, yes. Bathroom time is important. Doesn't matter what age, whether you've got toddlers or you've got fifth graders. You're either changing diapers or making a potty visit. That's right. So you've got to have a plan. What time are you going to go? When are you going to go? Is everybody going to go at the same time? Are you going to send kids one at a time? Is there a bathroom in your classroom? And how are you going to transition? How are you going to actually get there? How are you going to line up at the door? With two-year-olds? Yes. Yes. So you've got to have a plan. Yes. Yep. And then there comes that time of the day when everybody goes home. Listeners don't get too excited. <laughs> no, you got you got to have a great plan for this part. Yes, I have a dear friend who likes to call this time of the day the where's your mama time. Where's your mama? <laughs> yes, because as we know in kids ministry, there are some mamas that just take their time picking I, up their children. I don't children. know what you're talking about because <laughs> all our parents come right on time as soon as the service is over. <laughs> so you want to have that time planned. When parents are coming to the door and picking up, you've got to have something for the kiddos to do to keep them busy, active, and learning, yeah. right, during that time. So you've thought through all of these different times of the day, and now you've got to put them in a certain order. That's crucial. Yes. That's crucial for because there's other classrooms that might be going to a playground. There's other classrooms that might be doing something else. Using the restroom yes. that you're and so supposed you, to share. You want to make sure that you are thinking about everything going on inside the church, inside the halls of the kids' ministry. Exactly. And so, and think through, okay, because we know this is important, listeners, listen up. A child's attention span 
is what, Steph? One minute for every year they are old. Say what? One minute. But does that mean you can only have a one-minute activity if you're one? No, 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 no. No, that means like if you're one, you might do a song for a minute if you're in group time. Then you'll do a little finger play for a minute. Then you'll tell a story for a minute. Then you get up and run around in a circle for a minute. That sounds like a five-minute group time. That's awesome for a one-year-old. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But we do know that the attention span is one minute. So we've got a plan based on a child's attention span and how much time you're going to have the children. Maybe you're a weekday right. teacher and you're going to be there from nine to noon or nine to two. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're a full day program. You're going to be there from eight to seven. Right. Woo! Or maybe you're a Sunday morning a life group Sunday school teacher and you're going to be there for an hour, an hour and a half. Yeah. So you've got to think through, okay, how much time do I have in the day? Or the time that I'm with them. And then you're going to schedule out these moments in the day. So a sample schedule might be, you might plan for arrival activities Mm -hmm. for the first 15 minutes when they get there. Or you might go ahead and have your learning center set up ready to go. That's my favorite. Yes. When they walk in and they get to choose, where am I going to play today? Yes. It makes a huge difference to their behavior, too. And they want to come in the room because mm-hmm. they see the, all, all the activities set up, and they're like, hey, I want to go I do that. I want to do this. Yeah. yeah. Bye, Mom. Bye, Dad. Yes. And it makes um, the time where they separate from their parents so much mm-hmm. easier. And parents appreciate that. Yeah, they do. Especially in today's age. Yes. 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 You, some of you guys out there may have some hovering parents. I don't know <laughs> what you're talking about. <laughs> so um, they, when they arrive, maybe they're headed into learning centers or stations. It is okay, and this scares some teachers, Stephanie. It's okay for children to spend 45 minutes in learning centers. I think it's better than okay. I think children need it. Yes. They really need to be involved in these play activities with long stretches of uninterrupted time where they can think and process. Yes. One of my favorite um, moments with it was third graders. We were in a classroom. This was last year. um, And they were in the home living center playing. I want you to hear me, listeners. Third graders with the little kitchen, with the little (laughs) baby doll bed. And they were creating a foster and adoption center. That's amazing. That tells you where their heart is. Yes. So I went over and started to play with them. And while I'm playing with them, they said, do you want to adopt a child? Oh. And I said, yes, of course I want to adopt a child. So we're working through the process. They're telling me all the things. They're coming up with a system. They're problem solving. (laughs) And so I adopted my sweet little baby. And then this was my favorite part. They said, Miss Stephanie, you got to pay for it. Oh. And I was like, this is a big time. Yes. And so I said, okay, well, let me get my purse. And um, they said, no, that I could just pay for it on my phone with my oh, cash app. It, things have developed quickly <laughs> said, in third grade. Wow. So I'm adopting a child uh-huh. using my cash app. I was like, what is going on? But the whole point of that was because they had, thir- it was about 40 minutes actually, to play in learning centers. They were able to process all of that from what they've heard, what they've learned, and put it um, into practice. So when you're planning for learning centers, it's okay, depending on how long you have the children. Maybe mm-hmm. you're, you're only with them for an hour, so you only do learning centers for 30 minutes. Right. Right. Okay. But then snack time, 10 to 15 minutes is plenty for snack plenty. time. Yes. More than plenty. More yeah. than plenty. And then your group time, you want to base on your child's age. So for two-year-olds, what's a good group time is definitely? I like eight minutes because you can do two minutes of song, two minutes of finger play, two minutes of of the Bible story, two minutes of a fun thing after, a fun game, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But with our fifth graders, a great group time can be 20 minutes, 25 minutes, um, depending on what you have planned, if you are planned. Right. And those deep thinkers, those thoughts are coming out in those fifth grade conversations. There's lots of back and forth in a fifth grade group time that there's just not in a two-year-old class. Exactly. That's a great point. That's a good point. So 
so when you're planning these times, you want to think about, okay, their attention span, where they are in their growth and development. And then when it's time to go home, you know, you, they can go back into their learning centers. Which is a great place for them to wrap up the thoughts. And the learning centers are, we're going to go deeper into learning centers in another session, but that's where the Bible's taught as well. Yes, exactly. So they're learning while they're playing. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. So leaders out there, you got to have a plan. You got to make your schedule. And here's what you got to do. Post it in your room because there are going to be days when people are out. Please don't be out. Please do not call in <laughs> Please, sick. we need you. <laughs> and so does your director and your kids minister. So we're all going to be there every day. But if by chance one day we couldn't be there, your schedule will be posted in your classroom for a sub to see, for someone else to see, or maybe you need to communicate with the parent what the schedule is for the day. Yeah. And the leader knows their classroom best. You know your kids the best. You know how your kids are coming together and what they like to do, something that maybe this particular group doesn't enjoy doing. So it's great for the leader to make the schedule and post it in their classroom. Yeah, that, that's a great thought. Yeah. I, I hadn't thought about that. That's good. So we've got our schedule. We've planned. We've got a plan. Yes. We are following our plan. So what's P, the next the first P, P is plan. The second one is prepare. Ooh, prepare. (laughs) All right. So what we want to do is for each one of those um, times during our day on our schedule, we're going to decide what we're going to do during that time. I love that because you are the owner of your classroom. So you are the one deciding what's going to happen. What are we doing for snack time? What are we doing for the Bible time? What are we doing for these stations and learning centers? You're the one who's deciding that. Yeah, and you can pick the things you like to do. Oh, yes. It's so fun. (laughs) So um, we're making a plan. So we're going to have the learning centers, each learning center. We're going to have an activity. We'll talk more about what that looks like. But let's just say, for example— We were teaching the story of the, let's do, let's pick one out of the air. How about the 10 lepers? Oh, that's a great one. (laughs) Yes. The 10 lepers, one return to say thank you. So let's just brainstorm for a minute. What would be some learning centers that we, or stations that we could set up that would be fun for friends to do in the classroom? Maybe in the home living area, they could. Have a medical kit. Oh, yeah. They could be the doctors. Yes. And they could help help heal their friends. Yes. Help their friends. Maybe cook some food for their friends. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. What about in the nature area? Oh, that would be good. Maybe some uh, magnifying glasses. Oh, because leprosy. Yeah. We're going to look into the skin. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah. See what all mirrors. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. So you could look, check out your skin, Mm -hmm. check out things like that. Good. What could we do in art? Ooh, dot art. <gasps> oh, like the bingo dot yes, markers? Yes, the bingo dot markers <laughs> on a piece of paper yeah. on a, with a people. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that would be, you know, sh- talking about leprosy and what that looks like mm-hmm. and what leprosy might look like. Yeah. So we could have that for an art center. Yeah. Okay. In the block center. Oh, what are we going to build in blocks? We can maybe. What if we built a home? Oh, for our friends, they need a home to live in. Yes, because they live outside the community. Now, in the block center, can I add some people? Yes, you could add those yeah. little ten people in yeah. there, and wooden people, the little pe- Fisher Price people, any kind of people. Yes, and you know what, Steph? This is what I want you to hear, elementary leaders. Your elementary kids want to play with these things too. Kid, I'm just going to say we have fifth graders that love to play in these learning centers. We have the big doll houses that can go and where they can uh, play out different scenarios with families, with people, with friends. And the first one to go are the fifth grade boys. (laughs) They love playing with these and acting out all the things that they want to talk about with their friends. It's a great way to learn. Yes. Excellent. So we're going to plan our arrival time, which could be our stations. Then we're going to plan our group time. Uh, and we'll have a session later on, another podcast about group time. But just so you know, the basics for group time are number one, you got to have a transition in. Then you can have a song, a finger play, a game, and the story. And if you're teaching the Bible story that day, 
memorizing or working on that Bible verse. Yeah. Yes. And then you're going to have a transition out of group time. So those are the things you need to plan for and prepare. Prepare what's the song going to be? What's the game going to be? What's the story? What what Bible verse are we going to learn? Right. Prepare those yeah. things. And same for when you get ready to leave. Right. Right. So preparing means not only knowing what you're doing in those times, but go get your resources. Yes. Yes. Because if you're going to do dot art in the art center, you got to get your dot art. And depending on your church, your church's supplies are in different places, but get with your kids minister, get with your director, get with the coordinator, find somebody to find out where your resources and are. It, and it might be that your kids minister, if you have the gift of organization, that your kids minister would love for yes. you to come in <laughs> and say, can I please help organize the resources? Because chances are she's going to say, yes, please. Yes. Please. That's yeah. great. Yeah. I love that. So get the resources you need. So you're going to need a doctor's kit or yep. several because mm-hmm. we don't want to have just one because no. then we'll fight over it. But have several doctor's kits. You need the dot, uh, bingo dot markers. or The little the, people for the block center. The little people, paper. Get all your supplies together. Prepare in advance. Have those ready. Okay, so you planned, you prepared, because in preparation, now, it's going to scare some of you listeners, but hang in there with me, okay, get there early. Yes. Yes, and if you're a paid teacher, don't expect pay for this. Just do it for the love of the Lord. Yes. Yes. Yeah, get, because this is your classroom. Yes. These are the children you are discipling. Yes. So get your classroom set up in advance. Have the bingo dot markers at the art table. Have the little people out in the block center. Have the medical kits ready to go. Have the magnifying glasses. Uh And if that means you have to put it in your car the day before, just put it in your car the day before. So So you don't forget anything. Be prepared. My husband always says... You never know what's in a kid's ministry leader's car. You never know. Right now in the back of my car is a bag full of rocks, a felt board, a baby doll, and some hula hoops. Wait, I have a wagon. <laughs> I have the baby doll. Yes. And I have some blocks. Yes. Some blockbusters. <laughs> Let's go. Yes. So if you need to throw it in your car, throw it in your car, bring it with you. Yes. Okay? But have the resources you need ready to go when children arrive. Yes. Okay. So plan, make a plan, have your schedule, prepare, know what you're going to do during each time, have the resources ready when children arrive. And number three, can I get a drum roll? What's- Plenty to do. Okay, can I ask a question? Yeah. <laughs> if I don't have enough to do as a teacher, I just want to say, what will the kids do? They're going to go crazy. The kids are going to be in charge. Yes. If, if you are not in charge by having your three Ps, the kids will find something to do. That's right. Yeah. And it's probably going to do some, be something you don't want them to Most do. Most likely something <laughs> you don't want them to do. Exactly. So, teachers, we want to encourage you. When you have plenty to do, this means think outside the box. Do things that um, kids love that you might be a little afraid of. What's something that you were afraid of when you started teaching? What were you afraid of? Paint. Oh, and that's a huge one. If you have paint out on the table, children will sit there and paint and paint and paint. Yeah. Yes. What I, was one for you? Glitter. Oh, <laughs> I was, oh my goodness, this glitter is going to get everywhere. But, and it does. Yeah. And then you clean it up and it's, it's okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. I was also afraid of sensory tables, like a water table. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, but what I learned is you put a tablecloth underneath it, and you talk about water stays in the table, which we'll talk about that later yeah. on in another podcast, Yeah, um, how to help children stay on task in appropriate ways. But um, yeah, get out those things that are a little bit um, scary, might, might even be Play-Doh, right. sometimes Play-Doh, or shaving cream. Oh, yeah, shaving cream. But great. this is what we know. When we have plenty to do, not only are children learning, but they're busy. And they're happy, and that makes for a happy teacher. A happy teacher, a happy parent. Yes. Yeah. And the behavior in your class drops dramatically when there's plenty to do. You don't have the fighting. You don't have the arguing because all those stations, we like to have seven learning centers and at least fill at least five of them. 
all of those stations are filled, so they have choices. And all of the if all the choices are good, there's no reason for a child not to go to want to go to one of them. Exactly. Yeah. Boy, that's beautiful, girl. <laughs> Preach. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, listeners, we're wrapping up now, and as we wrap up, we just want to remind you. Okay, start out. Make your schedule. Have a plan. Know what you're going to do each moment of the day. Prepare activities for each one of those moments and have plenty to do. And when you do, you will find children that are happy, children that are learning, and your life will be much better.